Okay, so last presenter, we have Chris Holmes, and he is going to be talking about STACK, which is the spatio-temporal <laughs> asset catalog, which is a great way, a great metadata standard for querying and making available satellite imagery on the interwebs. Yeah, I got it. Yeah. Few more. Uh, super excited to be here for my first GODC. I've heard about these for years. I live in San Francisco, lives in New York, and always been jealous about the GODCs and the energy you have, and psyched to finally join one. So glad to have it. Um, so my turn to follow two super compelling topics. What is objectively a pretty boring topic. <laughs> so I weirdly become pretty excited about working on standards the past couple of years, but. Pretty weird thing at a party, people are like, hey, what are you excited about? Oh, I'm really into standards for geospatial interoperability these days. Yeah! 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 This is the one audience that this is like not unexcited to, but just imagine you're out anywhere but with this crowd. <laughs> Next! Uh, I'm into making new standards, uh, which just adds to the standard suit. Little chance of any of these being a universal standard that covers all the use cases. Um, so yeah, less good. But I like to think the goal of these is not to replace all the previous standards. Uh, it's actually to build standards that encapsulate tons of geospatial knowledge into a form that non-geospatial person can use and understand. Um, and really provide this easy on-ramp to geospatial, uh, make it so everyone can tap into the power that you all know, uh, with an emphasis on sort of developers, people who are out there building stuff, um, but you know can't spend weeks learning all this is, and, and put that into to a form that they can encapsulate but brings them on into our world. Um, just yesterday, uh, one of our collaborators told me about this story. So uh, Arturo does some super cool computer vision stuff, pulls out uh, objects from you know, aerial imagery, um, really cutting edge stuff. Um, they didn't have a geospatial person until uh, Jeff joined them. And Jeff gets there, and he says, you know, hey, this is cool. Like, the front developer is like, took, he's like, took weeks to build this interaction, because it's all SVG. It's no geospatial components at all. Um, but, I mean, it's beautiful, it's great. Um, uh, Jeff showed them open layers, and the colleague took this, spent half an hour, and replicated what he had spent weeks of work on. <laughs> um, and, you know, it's just this, this geospatial stuff isn't available to everybody. Um, like, we're still a pretty niche community, um, and it's not uh, super far out there. So, uh, my goal at some level, I think, is so anyone who uh, has discovered the power of geospatial is able to make everybody else aware that you can tap into it. Now, for me, this actually comes back to standards. Um, the web works because it's underpinned by standards that anyone can use. Um, and there are these small pieces loosely coupled, but the web is what it is because it's layers and layers of innovation built on top of that. It's not about these core standards that are in it, but it affects all our lives. And I think geospatial has that potential if we can get these building blocks right. Um, so this week we actually have about 40 people gathered in DC from all over the world, many of them are here, um, working on a couple standards. Um, and I like to think that these standards have the potential to be building blocks that underpin layers of innovation um, that bring this power of geospatial to everybody. Um, we don't have time to really go into all of them, so this is just the quickest snapshot, but if you talk to probably three or four people here, you will find one who is at this <laughs> thing working on it. Um, so ask them all sorts of details about it. Um, the super quick overview, though, um, uh, another point is it's not even just about these two standards, it's about these building blocks that can build modern geospatial APIs. Um, this is uh, feature, OGC API for features. Um, and the cool thing about this, for people who have experience with the older standards, uh, you know, that was a very incomparable XML. This defaults to HTML, it's webby, you can browse it, you can look at it, um, but then behind it is GeoJSON, which is super flexible and powerful. So this is the, the features API that gets that kind of source code of the map uh, into a bunch of different systems. And then the other one is spatial temporal asset catalogs, um, which, uh, Spatial actually are OGC features APIs, so they're pretty linked to one another. We're focused on searching imagery and other geospatial assets. This 
kind of shows some of the power of interoperability. This is a new QGIS plugin um, that speaks to the OGC API. Uh, the first two ones are from that uh, Med Canada data set, and then that third one is actually a spatial temporal asset catalog API that pulls in Landsat imagery. Um, so all the pieces kind of come together. Um, the super quick stack, you know, why are we doing this? Um, we started it because if you want to find satellite imagery, uh, you have to go to a bunch of different places, a bunch of portals that look kind of exactly the same to get your unique data set. Um, it's even worse for APIs. Um, every one of those visualizations is powered by a different data set, and they all define these things differently. Uh, it might be min cloud cover or max cloud cover, it might be a range, it might be cloud underscore cover, it might be zero to one or zero to 100. So each of those requires a new API client. And, and what we really want to do with Stack is say, hey, it's cloud underscore cover, and it's zero to 100, 100, pretty sure. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> um, and that is what it is, and we can all use that and agree upon that. So it's kind of getting those standards, but then the API mechanics, we're using the features API, so that way you talk to the API is also a standard building block. So um, super quick stack, so it's uh, language for geospatial catalogs, focuses on search recovery, really simple and extensible. Um, and yeah, this kind of brings together a lot of the stack pieces. So this is stack browser. It's powered by a, a, just a single JSON record, uh, but this is accessible on the web, similar to the, the webby feel. This is automatically generated from just that data file. Um, has a cloud optimized geotiff that gets the imagery, pulls in the JSON, this is training data. So it's like, how do we make training data much more accessible to people? Put it on the web, make it so anyone can explore it, download it, use it. Um, so yeah, a lot more here, so find someone to talk to. Um, and thank you. Are we sure? <laughs> yes, standards! Woo! Woo! I mean, what's it like uh, helping lead the development of a new standard? Uh, it's fun. <laughs> uh, I don't know, it's cool to bring together a bunch of diverse people who really care about the same thing. Like, you kind of have to care about something bigger than yourself to work on a standard. Like, so everybody is here to do something more than just go to work and do my job. So I think that's yeah really satisfying to just geek out with people who care about the same things and kind of want to make the world better. So yeah, overall it's great. What are some of the use cases you've worked on? Uh, with those data sets um, and standards. And standards. Um, yeah, so my day jobs for Planet Labs, uh, and we do imagery and make imagery available. Um, yeah. How, how could USGS deliver their data better? Uh, <laughs> so USGS is actually adopting Stack. <laughs> yeah, so I think actually for most developers, putting it in a stack and then cloud optimized GeoTIFF is another standard that kind of walked over a bit, but it, it's a really cool format that is still a GeoTIFF you can use in your desktop GIS, but the cloud optimized means that other software on the cloud can stream it and use it. Um, so instead of, you know, to get the data, you have to go to a website and, and look at it or put it on your desktop GIS, it makes it so that's just streamable and accessible. So uh, that I think that reformatting in some ways is a, a bigger deal even, even than the stack. Stack is sort of the metadata that, that helps you sort out what that is, but the cloud optimized GeoTIFFs lets many systems use the data directly as opposed to having it live sort of behind firewalls and, and hold up. Um, so I think once that's out, we're going to see a whole lot more use. And, and you see this already. A lot of Landsat is so great and valuable to many people put into that format themselves. But it's a huge step for USGS to say, hey, we are going to support this officially. So Awesome. Thank you so much. Thank you.